G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Sunday over in the States, it's Monday here in Australia, and the weekend retracement obviously has come. Uh, it generally does, we rarely ever miss it, but on some occasions we do. But things are still looking pretty good in the markets. Obviously down a little bit, this was a sort of $1.2 trillion, and we're just under $1.2 trillion, but nothing too bad. But look, BTC dominance, again, it's under 60% now. Ethereum dominance growing, and obviously other altcoin dominance growing as well. But here's something that I'm really liking at the moment. Well, I won't say I'm really liking. I'm liking the fact that it's going down. Gas price is under 100, but it's still way too high. Again, the average person just can't afford to use Ethereum. And that's really sad. And I say this regularly. But, you know, we're going to keep going over it until that changes. Layer 2 and ETH 2.0 just can't come quick enough. All right, we can see sort of a mixed bag in the sort of 24 hours. There's some green there and there's some red there. There's a bit of this and a bit of that. Let's have a look. What's been the really big movers over 24 hours? All right, Elrond is going on an absolute tear at the moment. So congratulations to anyone that was in Elrond. Uh, Avalanche doing well. Doge just continues to yeah, defy logic and all the rest of it. Uh, and we will have a look at a story that explains you know, some of what's going on. Terra, so Terra Luna doing extremely well. Near Protocol, NEM, Cosmos. Again, finally, I sold half of my Cosmos, but I'm glad I held on to half of it. And the graph, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this. I really like the graph. Got invested in it a little while ago. I like what they're doing with the data storage side of you know, the blockchain and obviously turning that into a cryptocurrency as well. So we can see there's some pretty good movers here. Nothing sort of too crazy except for, you know, these kind of big high double digit ones. And even they're not that crazy except for when we get up to, you know, 50% in 24 hours. Again, not financial advice, uh, just my personal opinion. I'd consider taking some profits if it's pumped that much in 24 hours. But look, I mean, it's still up that much in seven days as well. But we've looked at the good side. All right, some great gainers. That's always good. What about losers? Is there any losers? And again, we're just looking at the top 100. Get rid of that. All right, nothing too bad here, really. Just, you know, one double digit loser and then everything else is single digits. But you just look how they've performed over the week. If you've made 20% in a week and you've lost 5% in 24 hours, you're probably not complaining too much. And, you know, maybe you were lucky enough to take some profits and then you can buy in again a little bit cheaper. Who knows? But again, none of these losses are really too bad at all. And all you have to do is look to the right at the seven day, like, I mean, UMA, 156% over seven days and now it's down 3%. I don't think there'd be too many people complaining. So the gains are still there, only a couple really big gains, but the losses, they're quite small at the moment. So that's still super bullish for the cryptocurrency markets, but this can't last forever. We may have a fairly hefty retracement, correction, whatever you like to call it, in the not too distant future. I'm not trying to spread FUD, it's just something we need to keep in mind. When things get as bullish as they are now, and I believe we've still got a lot more bull bullishness to go, we will start to see some bigger corrections. I just don't know exactly when they're gonna happen, and no one does, it's all a bit of a guess. So I've read some Twitter things before, some people are saying that they're coming in March, so I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, that's only next month. All right, let's go over and have a look at the chart. So this is how it's played out. So we're getting in this wedging pattern. Again, I thought it was gonna take till about the 8th of February. So, which is today here in Australia, still the seventh in other places, uh, it broke out a little bit before. And again, we've got that weekend correction. We're generally going to get a correction almost every weekend. There's not too many weekends that we don't. Sometimes they can be really s steep and sharp corrections and other times, again, they're just little things like this. Once Monday comes, I do expect the market to start making its way back up again. And we're just looking at Bitcoin at the moment, but Bitcoin generally leads the way other than when it kind of cools off and this is when the altcoins and things get their chance to go crazy but once bitcoin starts to break above this forty two thousand dollar mark i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of profits start to go back into bitcoin that's people just chasing the market the really smart people can see it coming and get in and out at the right time i.e the good traders and things like that for me that's why i think it's just easier to invest it's you don't have to worry about the volatility volatility as much as long as you understand where you are in the cycles, you're generally gonna be all right. Okay, 
this I found to be a very interesting read. So crypto, long and short, could scalable payments for Bitcoin undermine its value? No, I don't think they can. But there is some very interesting information here. And I shouldn't have said, but there's some very interesting information. Just And there is some very inf interesting information because it doesn't go against uh, Bitcoin not being valuable and much more widely adopted. Let's have a read though. So a week ago on Visa's Q1 earnings call, CEO Al Kelly said the company had, uh, sorry, may add cryptocurrencies to its payments network. I don't think it's may, I think it's 100% they will. He acknowledged that Bitcoin is not used as a form of payment in a significant way at this point, but went on to discuss the strategy to enable users to purchase these cryptocurrencies using their Visa credentials or to cash out or cash out onto our Visa credential to make a fiat purchase at any of the 70 million merchants where Visa is accepted globally. So I don't think it's Visa are thinking about doing it. Usually when they're saying that, they already sort of are planning it. This will bring worldwide adoption to cryptocurrencies. Visa now doing it for everybody. And then we can go down to here as well. So in PayPal's quarter four earnings call this week, the first since the company started allowing the purchase and sale of a handful of cryptocurrencies via their PayPal account, the company revealed that it was planning to start allowing customers to use their cryptocurrency, their crypto balances to pay for goods and services at any of the approximate uh, approximately 29 million merchants on the network and that it was significantly investing in the crypto business unit. It is happening, it is coming to, as they say, a store near you very, very quickly. Crypto is about to go mainstream. Visa, again, they're not gonna say they may do it, they are going to do it, 100%. They have seen the kind of money that PayPal has made and they were only letting their American customers do it before. Now they are going to let everybody do it. So there's 29 million users for PayPal, 70 million users for Visa, and they have a whole stack of other little merchants that obviously use their networks as well. The time is now. Cryptocurrency is getting ready once it goes global. Again, 70 million people use Visa, businesses and people. Imagine if all of them want to own a bit of Bitcoin. They just simply can't. 29 million different merchants. So that's not users, that's just merchants. And, and again, that's 70 million merchants. That's so businesses and that. Imagine all of these people want to own a little bit of Bitcoin. They simply can't. Bitcoin's prices are going to skyrocket, but so are others. They're not just talking about Bitcoin here. They're talking about other cryptocurrencies. So again, things like Ethereum and you know whatever other coins they decide to add in the future. This is super bullish news, and I really think it's going to be this year, and, and I now start to think it probably will be an extended bull run if this suddenly goes globally i think prices of you know particularly the ones that you know visa will you know put out there to the to the rest of the world and the one that paypal has so again that's litecoin bitcoin ethereum and i think it was uh, bitcoin cash was the other one that paypal were doing i think once that goes worldwide you are going to see big adoption from them so the globalization uh of the crypto network, it is about to happen. All right, another reason I'm extremely bullish, and I've come to you with a lot of bullish stories, and it's because we're in a bull run, so there is a lot to be bullish about. Pro-Bitcoin Senator, US Senator, Cynthia Loomis, has been appointed to the Senate Banking Committee. I spoke about this a few days ago. She has been talking to Janet Yellen and has outlined her plans to help the new Treasury Secretary and other US lawmakers understand that Bitcoin is a great store of value. She got into it back in 2013. So she's, you could almost call her an OG. She's been around almost since day dot. Luma says that Yellen has an open mind on this topic, even though she currently thinks that cryptocurrencies are mainly used for illicit financing. And again, that's just because Janet Yellen probably does not know a lot about it. Bad news travels fast, good news doesn't travel that fast. And so that's the problem. Anyone who doesn't know about cryptocurrencies or really understand them, the first thing they're likely to hear about it is it's a scam and it's going to zero and it's funny money and just criminals use it. And then that's what they'll stick with until they are better educated. 
And I'm guessing Janet Yellen is exactly the same, but it's good that she has an open mind. And we need people like Miss Loomis to come through and educate. And what I really like is, I don't like to you know, say anything about anyone's age, but Miss Loomis, she's not some spring chicken. She's not an 18, 21 year old who's gonna go and try and tell people who have the majority of the money, which is people her age and a little bit older. So the older generation have the bulk of the money in the world. It'd be really hard for some 20 year old to come and try and tell them the, the great things about Bitcoin. We need people in the older age bracket who understand it to then pass it on. And that's how we get that big massive adoption. So again, I'll say it, congratulations to Mrs. Loomis. And I really hope she can push the cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, because Bitcoin's good, but there's Ethereum and a, a number of DeFi protocols and that out there. I really do think they are the future and we need them to be adopted mainstream not just for us so we can you know become filthy rich but just they're a much better system than the current fiat system that we have that really just keeps the rich rich and the poor poor now there's some more interesting things that she put down here so in an interview with morgan creek digital partner anthony pompliano last week or pomp is the way most of you would know him the senator reiterated her view on bitcoin saying I really see it as a great store of value for individuals, for corporations, and for government. It is an excellent store of value and that it should be part of every individual person's investment portfolio. I completely agree, but it, there's only 21 million Bitcoin in total. A couple of million have probably been lost and there's actually only 18 million Bitcoin at the moment. The other two and a half million I think haven't been mined yet. So she's saying everyone in the world should have some Bitcoin. Well, that means no one could own a whole Bitcoin. So if you are lucky enough to be one of those lucky people and yeah, that has more than one Bitcoin, I can't imagine the wealth that you may have in the future. I'd love to be uh, part of that club someday. That would be ideal. And she, there's, it's a pretty interesting uh, read this article. So if you want to go and have a look, Bitcoin.com, I won't spend too much time on it. Now, Dogecoin, I mean, it just keeps pumping. But now we've got other people that have joined kind of the bandwagon. So really it was originally Elon Musk. Then we heard about Gene Simmons and now Snoop Dogg joins, uh, the Gene, joins Gene Simmons and Elon Musk in pumping Doge. And there was a really funny tweet. So we got this one, obviously, Snoop Dogg. And it says, at Elon Musk, now Snoop Doge. <laughs> that is pretty funny. But I really like this one, Elon's uh, reply message. So it has finally come to this. Uh, very, very nice. <laughs> and the Doge dog up there, the Shiba Inu, I think is the breed of the dog. So very funny. And anyone who's in, in Doge, probably doing quite well at the moment. It doesn't have any real use though. Its fundamentals aren't exactly solid. But I mean, it is a cryptocurrency and who knows, it, it could do a lot better for me. I'm not jumping onto this uh, sort of pump bandwagon because again, at the end of the day, to my knowledge, and I'm not exactly what I'd claim to be an expert on Doge, but it's just a very basic cryptocurrency. I don't think it has a cap. I think it can continually be made. And yeah, the fundamentals aren't exactly great for it. But look, people are making very good returns from Doge at the moment. I just you know, I won't say never because maybe at some stage it will. If it has a big heavy retracement, I might look at getting into it. But it's up at 10 cents almost at the moment. People are trying to pump it to a dollar. I think that could be extremely hard, but good luck to them. All right. MicroStrategy, they had their Bitcoin conference not that long ago. Uh, and there's a few interesting bits and pieces in here. So Michael Saylor's crusade to bring the Bitcoin gospel to as many entrepreneurs around the world as possible seems to be paying off with thousands of people willing to listen to his message at various virtual conferences. And it seems his latest call was particularly successful. In a tweet dated 6 of February, so it's only sort of two days ago, the famous businessman revealed that more than 22,000 people registered for his MicroStrategy World 2021 event. During this event, he discussed several topics related to Bitcoin, from legal and financial perspectives to his uh, corporate strategy. Of these 22,000 people registered, Saylor claimed that more than 8,000 attended his Bitcoin for Corporations program specifically. 
This means that 6,917 had an interest in listening to Michael Saylor talk about the world's largest cryptocurrency and its potential for the market. Our micro strategy uh, World 2021 was a great success with 22,031 registrants. The Bitcoin for Corporations program attracted 8,197 attendees from 6,917 different enterprises. So that's basically institutions. So there's 6,000, let's just round it up, to 7,000 institutions that are at the very least interested in Bitcoin. 7,000 institutions. I think things are going to get extremely crazy. It's going to continue to build. And it's news like this that does make me, you know, I don't believe yet, but suspect that this Bitcoin bull run may be one of the bigger ones that we've ever seen, but also stretch out longer than what the other ones have done. But look, there's no guarantees. We'll just have to play it by ear. You know, take profits along the way if you're worried that you won't be able to time the market. And look, the truth is no one knows exactly how to time the market anyway. It's a total guessing game. You don't have to pick the exact top and you don't have to pick the exact bottom. You just got to be thereabouts and in the crypto world, you will do very well, not financial advice. All right, last but not least, as the Bitcoin price suddenly surges, here's the case for a 12 trillion total Bitcoin value. I see this coming. I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. I also see it going a lot further and we'll go down and have a bit of a read. So others have echoed Minerd's bullish Bitcoin predictions, praising Bitcoin's fixed supply of just 21 million Bitcoin tokens. One River Asset Manager, exec, Chief Executive Pete, Eric Peters, said he believes that Bitcoin will eventually be worth more than gold putting its value at approximately half a million dollars per Bitcoin. The total value of the world's gold market is currently placed at around 12 trillion, with gold priced at around $18,000 per ounce. Cryptocurrencies are really interesting in the sense that they are a new asset class altogether. Peters told Bloomberg last week, adding they have some unique qualities, part of which resembles uh, part of which resemble the qualities that you'll find in gold, except that they that they are wildly underpriced relative to gold. Very, very interesting. And I would totally agree. Cryptocurrencies, because most of them, they're capped. They are fixed. They've got a, a finite, sorry, not a finite supply, a fixed supply. They cannot be made anymore. Gold, they just keep mining it. They keep finding new bits of gold. And... You know, there's talk about Elon going to mine gold on meteors and all the rest of it. So gold's upside is limited. I'm not saying it can't go up by more. I'm not saying it couldn't even maybe 5x or 10x at some stage. But it's just not going to have the same kind of growth patterns that cryptocurrencies will. They are the new. They are the digital. Gold is analog. Analog doesn't just simply die and go away. It just becomes a little bit more redundant. And maybe at some stage it will. When I think about gold, I do think of it as a fairly primitive thing from back when you know, we were a lot more primitive as a species and we'd just be fascinated by things that are shiny. And we still are and we still have that in us. But we've, you know, gold essentially, it's a rock. <laughs> you need to think about that. A metal, but still a rock. It's something that comes out of the ground. It's, it's earth. That is a very primitive way to look at how to store value. I pulled this thing out of the earth, and that is valuable because it's pretty and shiny. Again, we're never going to completely get away from that because that's what these cryptocurrencies are sort of as well. They're just a digital form, and they're you know kind of shiny, and there's that not so much shiny as they're shiny in your face, but there's just something about them that sort of gravitates to us. Cryptocurrencies probably won't last forever, but I would say they're going to be the next big thing for the next hundred years or more. I would be surprised if, they, again, they'll, they'll outsee me, that's for sure, and they'll probably outsee us. But at some stage in the far distant future, there, there will be something new. I just don't know exactly what it is. Again, most of the monetary systems that humans have had over their entire existence 
don't last for more than around about sort of a hundred or a couple of hundred years and then something else comes along it has been fiat systems uh, and different ones uh, france was the global world reserve currency i think spain had one for a while uh, england had one and currently we're going through the american dollar being the world reserve currency that is close uh coming to an end not the american dollar is going to zero just their currency being used as the world finance mechanism i guess something else is going to take over and there is talk about that mixed basket uh, approach and i really do like that and i'd really love to see bitcoin become part of that and maybe this lady and janet yellen have something to do with that happening love to know your thoughts do you think bitcoin is going to become part of a a bag of assets that is going to form the basis for the next world currency love to know your thoughts i'm hoping it does I, I don't think it will i think it'll be overlooked uh this time around i definitely think that will happen in the future uh i think the upside for bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is extremely high for at least the next 10 maybe 20 even 30 years it, it, it won't just get adopted overnight and sort of happen like that there's going to be people who are still you know they're all about cash and the old system and it's going to take them a long time to move across and other people will just simply grow up with this stuff and won't know any different all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that game train and i'll see you next time